Welcome to this week's episode of Top Knox Fishing. I'm your host, Mark Cooper. Join my friend Chad and I, the second ginger in our merry group of fishermen, on a new type of fishing experience that I've yet to film here on the channel. Today we'll be using the new Hog Island Skiff jet boat to traverse the dangerous waters of the Clinch River in high flow situations. We'll be using the technique that the majority of trout fishermen have never thought to use and we're going to explain that all in this video. That looks like troutlicious, baby. Baiting up here. Yum. Chad's got one. He just threw that out there too. Oh! Good morning, y'all. It is a blustery 30 degree morning here in East Tennessee and Chad and I are a glutton for punishment and we're gonna go trout fishing. But first, we're catching bait for trout. Yeah, you heard that. We're not using flies or a fly rod. We're catching other fish to catch trout first. Love it. Like we're catfishing or striper fishing. Now we brought artificial lures and whatnot, but we're gonna try to catch some big trout on other fish. So that's what we're doing here today. Right now we're on Fort Loudon Lake and we're gonna throw the cast net to try to get some threadfin shad and little gizzard shad. And then we're gonna take it to another lake up the road here about 30 miles, uh, the upper end of Melton Hill Lake on the Clinch River and we're gonna go trout fishing. So hopefully bait's easy this morning because it's cold as crap. We're gonna be using Chad's new river sled. It's called a Hog Island Skiff, and the boat is made out of the material that makes kayaks. And he's got a 40 horsepower jet drive on the back, so we are gonna be scooting up the Clinch River. That thing is so light, you can pick the whole front end of it up, no problem. So we can scoot over these shoals in the shallow water on the Clinch with ease. And if you knock a hole in this thing or mess it up, they send you this stuff the, the kayak material that you basically use a heat gun and weld it back onto the bottom of the boat and uh, it just fixes it. But you gotta really knock the crap out of it for it to mess it up on one of these boats. It's super cool. So, 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 so light. And we going trout fishing. Heck, we may even catch a striper up there. You never know. Or a walleye. But it's a beautiful morning here in East Tennessee and we getting in. What you guys didn't see is Chad falling on his ass going down that ramp that's covered in ice. <laughs> Solid execution. The only thing wrong with fishing at 28 degrees is the ramp's frozen. Water temps, like, well, that transducer's still warming up. It's probably in the low 50s, I bet. All right, let's see if we can get some bait. This is what we're catching for bait, threadfin shad. And we're gonna use them as cut bait and hole baits dead for a trout. And we're throwing a cast net, even though I absolutely hate throwing one. <laughs> well, Chad's doing most of the throwing. I've thrown three times. All right. made it to the beautiful Clinch River here in the background and we're gonna launch the jet boat here and do a little run upstream they've got flow going right now so won't be a problem running anyways you could take a normal boat with this much flow but they're gonna cut it down to one gen here in a little while 
And that's where this puppy comes in handy. Because the last time I came up here, I about sheared my prop off on a shoal. So we're gonna put this boat in the water and go catch some trout. Nice, nice. Trout fishing, especially fly fishing, can be at times the polar opposite of the type of fishing I'm very good at. I'm a high tempo, high key individual, and sometimes with trout fishing, you've got to have some finesse, some patience, and very, very attention to detail oriented fishing that I'm not the best at, but when I go and do it, it makes me better in areas that I'm not good at. What we're seeing here is called a weir dam. Now this is a system of interlocking metal grates created by TVA some 60, 70 years ago, maybe longer than that. But essentially when the current is running on this river, the water flows through these grates and becomes oxygenated or more so than what it was before, which allows the trout to have the type of environment they need to survive even in the hot summer months when the water gets warmer or tries to and the oxygen levels go down naturally. So this is how we prevent that from happening. We are trout fishing, catfishing style, anchored up up here. And we've got a lay down back here with a little hole. And we're gonna throw cut bait like we're catfishing, except we're gonna catch trout. Because we're crazy. At least that is the idea here. And these guys, what we caught earlier at the cast net are what we're using as bait. We may throw a couple out whole, but other ones we're just gonna cut bait up like we're catfishing, just on a much smaller level. What we're using here are just a various assortment of spinning rods. This is a, a medium power falcon rod. We've got a, a light reel, 20, 30 size reel, 10 to 20 pound braid, and we've got an eight to 10 pound fluorocarbon leader on them. A couple split shots so we get on the bottom and a gamakatsu octopus hook. And that's all there is to it. What we'll do here, we'll just take one of these guys. Cut a little piece off. We'll get our rod. Hook it up here. Make sure that hook's exposed. <laughs> And then we're just gonna throw her back behind the boat and see if she'll stay on the bottom. There we go. She's on the bottom. So we're just gonna come up here, make sure our drag's loose so we don't get broken off by a big giant brown. And we go put her in the rod holder. Now trout sometimes will tap on it or they'll just bam, slam it. It'll just start peeling line like a striper or something. You really can't ever tell. Basically just the kind of gear you'd use to catch skipjack or what I use. These are Chad's rods though. Piece of cut bait.
Get it down there. All right. And then we'll go right there. She's on the bottom. <laughs> what a hit pretty rainbow very nice very nice oh <laughs> beautiful fish he thumped the crap out of it oh got him what Very a beautiful nice. fish. That is a beautiful rainbow. Look at that rainbow. The color on that thing. Wow. There's that pretty rainbow I just caught. Beautiful fish. She slammed it. Let's release her. Get in that cool water, girl. Put her head upstream. She fought hard. There she goes. Hey, girl. Beautiful fish. I love it. Gonna flip it back over here next to this tree where I just caught that last one. They use these trees as current breaks. And boy, she thumped it. That was fun. That was fun. And I want another one of those. We need to get a big giant brown. We need to get a big giant brown. A fellow jet boat doing trout things. baiting up here yum <laughs> I instantly regret doing that I should have just got the knife where is he about right there Chad's got one. He just threw that out there, too. Oh, oh what happened? Came unbuttoned. Oh. Another whole bait. Oh. That was a good fish. Too. Yeah. Oh, no. <clears throat> Maybe we've uh, coaxed the school up here. Here, I got one right here. All right, they're good. Trading. Dang. Man, he thumped the crap out of it. That was a good, that was a good, that was a good trout. I hate that. Especially when you have them on like that. That's two in a row. Chad's getting bit here. Is he going to take it down? He's tapping on it for sure. Oh yeah. He hitting it. Tapping on 
Oh yeah. I'd put that thing in your hand. You feeling? Put it down. We got here. There we go. We on, baby. He taking a snag? Oh no. He's still on. He come off. Oh no. Well, he was dunking on it. Oh, guys in a snag. Dang. That looks like troutlicious, baby. And he's swimming all the way over there? Is there no weight on it now? Or is he swimming with it? He had to have swum with it. Cause that was way over there. When we started. Yeah. Got him. Push on. Push on, baby. Woo. Is he on? Trout, baby. Hey. Little feller, get on in here. Man, if we were striper fishing, <laughs> that would be the... Primo. Creme de la creme. Look, he ate a little piece of chunk. <laughs> pretty fish, pretty, pretty trout. Nice little rainbow. Oh yeah. Look at that. Got that cut bait in his mouth. He's like, yes sir, I like that. Yes sir, I'll have another. Got him out. Oh, beautiful fish. I think I'm gonna go for two on the same piece of paper. Going for two? Far too far. Y'all, we're gonna end it here, but I got the tiniest little trout ever. <laughs> we were reeling up to leave, and I just set the hook as a joke, and there was a fish on it. Look at this little guy. Look at him. He was just sitting there with it in his mouth. <laughs> Just sitting there and being a little goober. Eating that cut bait. Look at that. That's wild. <laughs> the little feller just sitting there with the bait in his mouth. We'll let him go. See ya.